Good evening. Welcome to the latest Blue York One News. I'm Jonathan Sauerschel of NYCFCBlues.com and Blue City Radio. We're going to bring you this week's news for NYCFC. Uh, unlike last week, we don't have a packed itinerary, um, but there are some definitely some things to go over, including some news on one of our um, players who's brought maybe some of the more heated debates in the offseason, and that's Mixed Discrude. Mick Disgrude was with the United States men's national team in their January camp, as was Kyrie Shelton. Uh, while Kyrie Shelton did not get the play in either of the friendlies, uh, Mick Disgrude did start last Friday against the Canadians uh, at StubHub Center in Los Angeles. He started in uh, central midfield uh, as part of a 4-4-2, uh, partnered with Michael Bradley. And Mick Disgrude had a really good game. Uh, first half, he, uh, he looked to get forward a little bit. Uh, there were times when he looked a little tentative. Uh, partially, that could be because of Jermaine Jones's interesting decision to play center back in the midfield area at all times. But in the second half, Mix Discrude was simply, possibly the best United States player in the field in the second half. Uh, he, for the thirty some odd minutes that he played in that half, he was extremely efficient. He was aggressive. He was pushing into the final third. He should have had an assist if Josie Altidore could have put away a header. And all in all, he had a really strong performance, completing 46 of 51 passes. Um, he also won all three of his aerial duels and was helpful on defense when needed to be, but that was not what he was asked to do. He got forward and actually supported the attack and was a big impact on the United States controlling the second half in a game that they eventually won one nothing with a late goal from Altidore. Uh, so hopefully this is the start of good things to come for Mixed Discrude. Uh, in t 2016, uh, you know, certainly been a lot of questions where he's going to fit in with NYCFC. Last year was up and down, um, maybe to put it nicely. Uh, certainly had its moments that we would have liked to have seen more from him. Uh, but this year with a new manager, uh, seemingly a new formation, uh, Mix Discarud uh, could have a new, new chance to jumpstart his career with NYCFC and with the United States men's national team. So uh, good job, Mix Discarud. Uh, it was great to see you perform so well. And uh, hopefully you can carry that over into the MLS season. Uh, him and Kyrie Shelton have now joined NYCFC in Florida for their second part of their preseason training. Next bit of information. Uh, we have received more confirmation about something we talked about a couple weeks ago. Uh, the new NYCFC secondary jersey, their away jersey, will actually be officially released by the, cl by the club tomorrow, Wednesday. Uh, which is when you will probably view this. Um, so, and but it has already been uh, kind of leaked on NYCFC forums, and it is unique to say the least. Um, you can find photos many places. Uh, I don't want to ruin it, ruin the surprise if you haven't seen it. Needless to say, there's an interesting design uh, that some people might really, really find interesting and unique, and others might hate to the ends of the earth. Uh, I actually like it myself, but that's just my opinion. I know a lot of people don't, and I think I'm, uh, I'm one of few who actually do like it. But, it, you know, the bottom line is it's a dark blue jersey. It's got some orange trim, and it's got a pattern on it that is uh, it's going to stand out. Uh, you know, they're trying something different. It's definitely not cookie cutter. Um, it doesn't mean it's going to be well-loved. But it's definitely going to be something you're not going to see from a lot of other teams. So that'll be official release by NYCFC, the team itself, uh, on Wednesday the 10th. That's tomorrow or today if you're viewing this on Wednesday, which is likely. Um, so you'll be able to see it officially. NYCFC forums also uh, did have uh, photos uh, yesterday uh, to actually, so you can view it there as well. Um, but, you know, take a look, form your own opinion. Uh, I'm, you know, I think ultimately when anything with fashion, it is subjective and we do have to see it actually in person. Uh, jerseys do sometimes tend to look differently when you see them in person as opposed to seeing them through a photo. So, uh, something to look forward to though. And, uh, you know, it'll, it'll, uh, round out our, uh, jerseys for 2016 as we're keeping the same home jersey from last year. And we're going to be having the new secondary jersey. Uh, that means in 2017, we should have a new home jersey if the schedule, the alternating year schedules hold. That is common with MLS. Um, but something to look forward to uh, and potentially spend some more money on if you want to be fashion forward. Uh, in other news, 
Uh, a rumored move seems to be official now. Uh, while the club has not officially announced it, uh, NYCFC Nation uh, and our friends there have confirmed that NYCFC is bringing in Federico Bravo on a one-year loan with a per- with an option to purchase at the end of that year uh, from Boca Juniors in Argentina. The 22-year-old is a center uh, defensive midfielder slash center back. He can play both. Uh, he is tall. He is well over six feet tall. And it's come up through the Boca Junior system, which certainly is something to be said about his talent. He's made 36 total appearances for the Argentinian uh, for the Argentinian club since 2012. He last started a game for them in May 2015. Um, so it seems they're claiming that's official. Uh, the club has yet to announce it, but NYCFC Nation is claiming that this is happening and that he'll be flying to New York this week to complete his physical um, and sign the deal. Um, once this comes to pass, uh, he would actually be the 11th international player on the roster, which means we would actually need to add another international roster spot or drop one of our current international players, as we have 10 international roster spots currently. Uh, for those who aren't aware, international roster spots are something that can be acquired. You actually, uh, MLS sets up 160 for all 20 teams, so it's eight per team. You can then trade them, uh, and you trade them, and they last for a period of time. Uh, for example, NYCFC last year traded for two international roster spots. They're set to expire at the end of this year, uh, so they can trade for another one now and add an 11th, um, or they could drop one of their current international players opening up a roster spot. There is uh, a few options, and they have not actually used their their uh, allowed buyout that is allowed. Every MLS team has allowed one buyout uh, during the offseason of a player. Uh, this would prevent this would buy out the player and he wouldn't be, uh, affect the uh, salary cap. I, that is rarely done in MLS. You rarely see teams use that option, but it is available. Um, but it is pretty easy to acquire international roster spots. A lot of teams do not use them all. So um, in the coming weeks, we might hear about, uh, we'll hear about some sort of acquisition or, or roster transaction to secure another international roster spot one way or another. Uh, the rules state that the roster has to be finalized by opening day. So that's why they could bring in Bravo now and train and have him train with the club and even with 11 international players. The roster doesn't have to be set till opening day, uh, which in this case is March 6th. So they have some time to figure something out, uh, and we will uh, certainly keep you updated on what transpires. The final bit of news this week for NYCFC actually is a... um, a stroke of marketing, uh, some would say actually genius, uh, is certainly a, a unique marketing push by NYCFC. They are the first MLS team to uh, create a Chinese language website, and they are also now on a Chinese uh, social media platform. Uh, it's, it's pronounced Weibo. Uh, W-E-I-B-O. Uh, it's a social media platform for uh, in China. NYCFC is the first MLS club to uh, to go down this path. And it's certainly a very, uh, very intelligent move, in my mind, a business decision. And not to mention City Football Group has investments and partnerships now in China. Um, but New York City is a very diverse city with a lot of uh, Chinese and Chinese Americans. Um, and this offers up an opportunity for NYCFC as a club, as a business, as an entity to get their name out there and attract fans from all over the world. Uh, I, again, as a business move, I think this is very intelligent. They are the first one to do so. Uh, while many clubs have Spanish language sites, including NYCFC, uh, NYCFC is the first to go beyond just English and Spanish. So um, I think. Congratulations are in order to NYCFC, and if any of our watch, any of our viewers are uh, Chinese or Chinese American or of Chinese ancestry, uh, you know we uh, we're happy to have you on board as fans, and you know we're looking forward to the new season. We hope you are well too, and uh, also we, you know the Chinese New Year uh, just happened, the Lunar New Year, so uh, happy New Year as well if you do celebrate. Uh, and with that in mind. That ends this week's Blue York One News. I'm Jonathan Sourgell, NYCFCBlues.com and Blue City Radio. You can follow us on Twitter at NYCFCBlues, at Blue City Radio. Uh, And you can listen to the Blue City Radio podcast weekly. 
Um, and, you know, check us out and uh, certainly follow us and we'll keep you updated. And of course, follow us at Blue York One. Thank you very much. Have a good one.